Yeah, yeah, these guys are fun. They're entertaining. Like you said, I hope this guy's down to strike with them because if so, this is going to be a very entertaining fight. Yeah, I, I know Stefan's coach, uh, Mercado. I mean, he's a Fury pro, and he's always fun to watch. He's like a, you know, live or die. I'm, I'm or, you know, win or lose, I'm throwing down. Crafty jujitsu off his back. Fun striking. Stefan Coleman making his way to the cage. Young Blood looks like an athlete. Yeah, See Mercado uh, right there behind him. 170 pound fight. Yeah, right there behind him. Yeah, 170 pound fight, big fellas. Yeah, his coach, the one giving us gear now, he had a couple of fights in Fury. He fought one young Brazilian, just powerhouse. The Brazilian guy looked like Jose Aldo, was throwing crazy strikes, kind of gas. Mercado took his best shots and then just came back and finished the fight with the submission. It was awesome. He's, had, yeah. he's, he's been the underdog a couple times, his coach, and has come, out, come from the grave and got these wins. He had a tough matchup against Justice Torres last, but I mean, Torres is a jock, he's a beast, comes from a good team. No knock on that loss. It's always fun to see their prospects. And you see Stefan here. I mean, he's an athlete. Big welterweight, muscular, young. Yeah. All right, Jonathan Galvan coming out now. You'll hear some traditional Mexican music. Yes, sir. One of their trademarks. These Galvan brothers, I've seen them fight enough times now to know. They're just fun. They got great chins. They got good hands. They got good jujitsu. And uh, you know, it's funny looking at Stefan. He's just—he looks like a, a like a jock, like an athlete. And now Gavon's no no knock, but he doesn't have like the the crazy big muscles the and typical you know, like athletic it, build. Yeah, but man, they got cardio. They got a chin. They put a pace. Like they're fun, classic Mexican style fighters. Yeah, Take they, a yeah, punch that, to give two. That I Mexican mean, style, yeah. Very Diaz Brothers esque. Yeah, yeah. You know, every city's got uh, their sets of brothers. We've had the Mongonia brothers. We got the Galvan brothers, kind of next generation. Shout out to Sammy Mongonia. Just fought over the weekend. Fight didn't go his way, but it was it was a Muay Thai fight in four ounce gloves. Ah, Mongonia is a beast. Solid. He's probably one of the one of the hardest strikers, hard, hard nosed strikers a, a city could ever hope for. Shout out to Sam as Muay Thai. We got Jonathan Galvan in the cage now. Fight fans, we got a banger on our hands. It's going to be a fun one. This fight is underway. A lot of in and out already from Galvan. Big right hand from Galvan. I mean, you'll see he'll stay in your face and just hit you. Coleman, at least for now, looking like he's willing to strike. Oh, big body shot there from Galvan, and Ooh, another one another right one. to the liver, and a left hook up top. Oh yeah! Go Just notice the Galvan's pressure, and he'll and, and he'll keep this pace. Oh! oh left hand, threw a right hand of the body, and a left hook up top, but he drops him, scores a takedown and a side control. 
Couple big hammer fists, but Coleman looking to scramble up here on a single leg, looking to get his hands together by for the double. Galvani needs to let that go and maybe dig an underhook. But man, if you guys saw the combo, he threw a right hand to the body and just a oh, short left hook up top, and that dropped his opponent. Yeah, got the little quick flash, sit down, knockout for a second. Just Looked like the ground, shook him and woke him back up. Yep, he's got a good underhook. Nice, you see Galvan wrapping the leg around for a little post balance. Ooh. Big takedown there from Stefan. So in Galvan's lone loss, he fought a really big welterweight, really I thought a guy, and he was able to just blast through some doubles and just win the fight with some top control time. And, and I think I think Stefan's learning now why the guy utilized such instant wrestling. Yeah. It's because Galvan's a problem on the feet. Yeah, you don't want to stand in the pocket with him for too long. And, and you see Jason Solis in Galvan's corner. I mean, these guys got great jujitsu as well. Oh yeah. It's just you know in the welterweight class sometimes you just get these just physical specimens, these athletes. And Stefan's one of them. Just big muscular guy. Who tried to tip him off the top there? Not quite. This is where Galvan can use the cage kind of as like a, as like a block. Galvan needs to get his left shoulder to the cage. Get that left side out from between his legs and around the hips. If Galvan can get that left arm around the legs, around yeah, that he, inside leg, I mean, he's in on kind of a high crotch now, the high C grip. He needs to watch the guillotine. Now he's in on an appropriate double. Head's a little jammed. His head's out. He's got the underhook and he's back to his feet. Not a lot of time left to work in this first round. What a fun round. Oh, he, I think he's kneeing him low. Oh, he looks at the ref, says, hey. A wayward knee. Got me into pebbles. <laughs> Everyone's down to strike with the Gavan brothers until they're not. <laughs> and, and until they eat a couple, or they get sat down real quick. Like, oh, you know, and, hold on, I think I remember how to wrestle. And then, yeah, and then you're, you're getting hit in the body. And, man, if you've not been hit in the body with four-ounce gloves, like you would hit with, in the body with 16-ounce gloves, no fun. But the four-ounce gloves just hits they different. Dig. Same impact, yeah. different surface they area. A lot a more, deeper. A lot more contained. Man, it'll get you quick. All right, fight back underway here. Everything seems to be okay. Oh, big Great. body kick body there kick from there. Stefan. Galvan doesn't seem to care though. Pressure's back Ooh, on him. Loading that right hand up, trying to get it back. Oh, he does land that right hand. Ooh. Big shots. Nice, good into the first round. So Stefan, he had his moment, scores the takedown, hits the big body kicks, but he got dropped. I mean, not a 10-8, you know, because it was so competitive, but that's got to be a Galvan round if you drop Yeah, it. he did get the, the, I mean, the knockdown. If there's anything almost you want to do to win a round, it's a knockdown. Almost a guarantee that you will win the round. Any kickboxing or boxing match, you get a knockdown, it's a 10-8 round. Unless the guy really comes back or knocks you down back. Got a previous highlight there from the last fight. There's that body shot. We'll, we'll see the highlight here in just a second. Body punch, left there hook over the top. Yep. Too low, three Dang. high. Good recovery there from Stefan. Yeah, he was, it was right back, back up. He, he was back flat, very flash quickly. Flash knockdown, but a knockdown nonetheless. This kind of whip. Takedown. Yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah, he kind of powerful single. He used the fact that he was still hanging on to him, made him pay for it. Okay, looks like these fellas are ready for the next round. We'll see if uh, if Stefan can't hit uh, another big left kick. I mean, he really did some work to the body there. Yeah, he landed a, a, quite a few. You see the redness there on Galvan's midsection. Notice the the forward cup Galvan. He's gonna move outside, then faint in and draw out a strike. Oh, goes a high big there. Big high kick there from a big low kick. Man, Stefan's got some, some pop on these kicks. But look at that. Galvan takes a stiff jab and just keeps pressing forward. Oh. Galvan perhaps a little too anxious yeah, to get in there. The pressure kind of backfired there. You know, and it's, it's tough. It's such a fine line. You want to pressure him, but not get too close. You want to hit him, but not throw too many. A little body lock drag down there from Stefan. Looking to step over, get one hook in. He's looking to take the back here, maybe try to work his way to a choke. Rightfully so, does not want to be standing up anymore. 
You know, you hear Sisa Gavon posting on that right arm. He's got a lot of weight on that arm. That's just really yep. going to tax that bicep tricep out. Oh, here we go, setting up a head and arm. He doesn't quite have lower body superiority, does Stefan, to finish his head and arm choke. And I'm wrong, he's in mount. He was able to advance appropriately. Clearly Gavon's space bridging off the in. Cage here. He made I mean, this space. Is, this might, is deep, and Stefan's a big, strong guy. You see, you see Gavon bridging into him, just trying to take some of that pressure away, but this is deep. It gives a thumbs up, thumbs maybe up. not so Says deep. He's okay. Looks like a, a small adjustment needs to be made here. He needs to walk that a little bit deeper. And I think he's gonna catch a tap note. Oh, we say no, hey, yeah, look at that for Gavon. He's saying he's not doing anything with this choke. I mean, I know this is uncomfortable, I'll tell you, Cody, I stopped doing head and arm chokes in the gym. Training partners are good. I just wasted too much energy trying to finish them. Yeah. Unless it's just perfect Jacare style. It, 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 it'll burn some so, energy. Yeah, and they're just so hard to, on a good guy, they're really hard to eliminate space so on and Gavon's get the finish. scrambling appropriately. He's eating some good oh, shots. Oh, he's some heavy shots here. Oh, wow. He's Had, getting pinned a little. He needs to not punch from the bottom. And the referee calls the fight. Yeah, referee Rob Alexander steps in and calls the fight there. He has seen enough. Yeah, uh, you know, Stefan was landing some good shots. Gavon had just turned the angle, though. I think the ref could have maybe given him, given him that opportunity to, to maybe fight for position one more time. It's okay. It's an amateur fight. Yeah, we want to see these guys be able to, you know, go on and, and fight again soon and get right back into training. Although some fighters may be upset with when the referees decide to stop the fight. It may be early. We definitely would rather early than late. Yeah, and, and, and he did take some big shots. And Galvan did everything. You know, he, intelligent the is, is moving. It's, it's not just covering and accepting the shots. He does I mean, take he was turning, a, uh, he was bridging. He gets his shoulder pinned under a little bit right here, eats some shots. But again, the punching from the bottom is never a good sign, you know? No, no. I, I think I, I mentioned it earlier when you were gone. Uh, we would seen three times, now for the fourth time tonight, where someone was stuck in a position where they didn't know what else to do or how to do things to get out or recover the position, so they just decided to punch from the bottom, which is kind of a last resort yeah. type of situation. That's like a front, like you, you, you show your opponent you're, you're like defeated in the position when you punch from the bottom. Because instead of escaping, you accept the spot and then you try to strike. Anytime I'm cornering one of my guys and we're in mount and the person on bottom starts punching, I tell him it's a good thing. It's a fight's almost over. It's gonna be over soon. Either they're going to turn, give the back up, or the referee will step in and stop for you. And in this situation, the referee stopped the fight. We'll get the official decision in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Rob Alexander calls for a stop to the action. Two minutes, 24 seconds into round number two. Declaring aware by TKO, Steven.